Hi, welcome to my latest video. Well, this one should be fairly quick. I have an open PC on my bench right now. It already has in it, as its primary storage disk, a two terabyte M2 SSD. And it's also PCIe Gen 4. Then I have this second one terabyte Gen 3 PCIe M2 drive that I'd like to add to that as a second drive. So what I'm gonna show you in this video is how that's physically done. And then with Windows 11 installed on this PC, I will show you how to bring it up and be able to use it. So let's get started. Here's the motherboard. It's sitting on the bench right now, as I said. It could just as easily be inside of a case. Just in this particular case, I already had it out. So it's a pretty good example and I can get some nice close-ups. Here's the one terabyte M2 drive that I'll be putting in, a Samsung 970 Evo. And what I also have here is the standoff and screw that came with this particular Z690 motherboard from Asus. So the first thing I'll do is I will put this in place. Let me remove this little screw from the standoff. So now I have the individual pieces there. I put the standoff in first. Now it just so happens it's good to always check to see which one of the standoff positions you need. There are three of them here. This is the slot that I'm going to put it in. It also has another M2 slot over here. The existing M2 is sitting underneath this heat sink that was provided by the motherboard, and that's the two terabyte one, PCIe Gen 4. These slots support either Gen 3 or Gen 4. So if I just sort of size it out, it's the furthest most for the standoff. So I'll put that in over here. You could use an open-ended wrench of the right size, and it happens to be 3 16ths, by the way, that would work best, or a pair of pliers that have a nice flat tooth to them. You don't want long nose pliers. And then just give it a little bit of a tighter as you turn it until it just gets tightened. We'll hold the screw out for a second as I put the M2 drive in. So now I'll take the M2 drive, put it into the socket, put it in at about a 30 degree slant into the socket, and you push it in gently, and I like to wiggle it a little bit, until the lands disappear into the socket. With that, I now take a magnetic screwdriver. I put the little screw on it, the right size screwdriver, in this case a Phillips head. I will push this down. The little standoff has a collar to it, so I will just get that screw into the, coll the screw hole in the collar and tighten it down. Now at this point, the job is done. But I did want to point out that the proper way to do this is to always put a heat sink on an M2 drive. Here is a heat sink that would work. It sandwiches in an M2 drive in between a top cooler heat sink and a bottom metal plate. You use three screws on each side and it locks it in. I won't go into the detail of putting this on. I do have other videos that go into that, but it's no big deal. But as you can see, have the lands sticking out, and I could put that in instead. But for purposes of this video, I'm not going to put the cooler on it. It would fit in this particular slot. And these are available in red, black, and I believe also blue. I will put a link down below if you're interested in how to get one. So with that, the drive is installed onto the motherboard. Now let's go to the PC itself as I power it on and see what it looks like when I first bring the PC up in Windows 11. Now that we're in Windows 11, let's open up the drives. What I'm interested in is the manage disk. There we go, manage disk and volumes. That's what I want. Click on that. And as you can see, I have my existing two terabyte. It's formatted for 1.81 terabytes. It's where Windows 11 is installed. And I have a second drive here that says Samsung 970 Evo one terabyte, but it says unallocated. So what I'll do is I'll click on the unallocated and it says create volume. So I'll click on that and it will actually create a new volume to whatever I want. I can call this as backup, for example, call it whatever you want. And then it will format as 953 megabytes, just under a terabyte. It will become drive D. Now you could override this and make it other drives if you want. It defaulted to the next available one, which is fine with me. And then I will say format. 
and now as you can see all the way on the right hand side it sees drive D so if I click on that over here or if I just open up this computer you will now see it here I will click on this and I will say this PC and now what do I have I have a drive C which has 1.75 terabytes free out of a 1.81 terabytes max and I have this other drive here drive D which is called backup 931 gigabytes and I can double click on that and now I have space here which I can copy to or whatever I want to do let me open up a file here and just copy over to that drive I'll pick one of the test programs Cinebench R23 I will copy this into here and now it's going to copy over shouldn't take long and it copies over it's usable if I wanted to see how this performed I could come over and run in my case I have crystal disk mark I will run that disk mark 64 it's set currently for drive C which is the 1.82 gigabyte terabytes but I'm going to switch it to drive D which is an almost empty 1.92 terabytes and I will say all Now that's pretty good results. However, it could be performing better. If I reach over and touch the drive with my finger, it is quite hot. I couldn't leave my finger there more than a couple of seconds. If I had put a heat sink on there, we would have seen better performance in the second half of this test, especially because that's the right test and it actually causes more transfer current to go through that drive.